Um, we're going to do item number 12 on our list of items for stimulating people's thinking about what might be advantageous to hoard for a time that lies ahead. And of course, when we talk about hoarding, we, we're suggesting that A, it's useful to you, and B, that if you have lots of it, you one of two things. Either you can depend upon it for a long time, or you can trade it. So item number 12 is gas. If you don't have a gas bottle, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage. Now, that's not to say that your life is going to be miserable. Who knows? The Lord may protect you in untold ways that we can't imagine. And he will protect people according to their hearts, not according to the size of their wallets. That's just a fact. No wealth is going to insulate us from God's wrath. You can go into this thing with all of the caravans and the this and the solar panels and the that that you like. Ultimately, it's not about how much you have. But as Mr. Miller always says, Je moet toch voorbereid. So what is a good thing to, to prepare? It's gas. In an environment or in a circumstance where we don't have grid electricity, a circumstance in which only very few of us have solar panels, and many fewer of us again have those expensive batteries to go with the solar panels, and in which it will rain sometime, and it won't be easy to cook outside, and so on and so forth, gas is going to be very advantageous to those people who have it and who are able to share it or barter it. There will be a terrific demand for gas. How easy is it going to be to take 10 gas bottles with you? Not very easy, for sure. But I think that it's worth mentioning, excuse my noisy phone in the background, I think that it's worth mentioning on this list and hopefully it will stimulate your thinking. All right, everybody, what is our item number 13 on our list? Item number 13 is paraffin. Paraffin is something that we, we don't all use readily in our day-to-day -day lives in our modern environments. But it's something which was once considered a, a, a fantastic modern solution. It was something that was used for cooking before um, uh, electricity became absolutely universal. It was used for lighting. It was used also for heat. And if you're in the fortunate and blessed position to be able to hoard up a little bit of paraffin, I've only got a few liters myself. I wish I had more. I wish I had, I don't know, say 200 liters. Um, uh, but uh, I think I might have about five liters, and, and uh, I'm certainly conscious of the fact that it will be beneficial for me to accumulate more because it has so many applications in lanterns, in cookers, and in heaters. So, uh, hopefully that's some uh, food for thought for you. Okay, guys, this is item number 14 on our list, and I'm sure that it's going to be a contentious one. Uh, some of you are going to have a strong opinion, firstly, about it only appearing at number 14. And um, I've got to defend something here. By and large, we, we tried not to split things up too much, you know. Uh, but, but we split this, that is to say, medical, up from antibiotics because of the an anecdote I told you that earned antibiotics position number three on our list. So there was a reason why we really separated out antibiotics and emphasized it. But we're not going to do that with all of the medical. Plasters number five, searches number nine. And so, you know, it, it would get ridiculous. Medical, it goes without saying, is going to be immensely, immensely, immensely valuable. And it's almost certain that no matter how hard we try, it is the one thing or one of two or three or four things that we will have the least relative to the amount that we would like to have. Now, I'm going to contradict myself slightly. I said we're not going to split up everything. 
in medical. I'm just going. Yeah. Other medical. The whole lot. Do your own research. Look into it. There's some great advice out there, including by a guy, an American doctor who lives in South Africa, who's a top prepper, called Dr. Ray Mossy. Excellent man. I've met him. Excellent, excellent man. But we're going to isolate one other thing, just to stimulate your thinking. Imodium and similar products. Why? Because we will be in an environment in which people are getting sick left, right, and center. And cholera, cholera and similar diseases of the digestive tract will wreak havoc among us. Sooner or later, there are going to be outbreaks. That's a fact. And people will, uh, I'm trying to choose family-friendly language, defecate themselves to death literally, often dying of um, dehydration, emodium, some food for thought. Thank you. Hello, everybody. All right. We're now on item number 15 on our list of items uh, that we've prepared to help you to at least think, to at least stimulate your thought. Um, or for the time that lies ahead, for preparing for the time that lies ahead. Item number 15 is large, rugged, and durable plastic bags and or tarpaulins. Remember, everybody, that we will be in a time when you can't go to the shop to buy um, waterproof things, you know, plasticky type things. And they're going to be in sore demand. That's indisputable. I mean, that's, you know, what, uh, what they call in Latin a sine qua non. Without this, nothing. You know, so it's a basic fundamental principle. Is that there is going to be a massive demand that can't be met for waterproofing. Or for things that are waterproof or watertight. Um... And, uh, yeah, so uh, anybody who arrives in a certain camp or location and has, I don't know, a hundred heavy-duty large plastic bags will be uh, able to trade those things or barter those things quicker than you can say jumping jack flash. And, of course, tarpaulins fall into a similar category. And, of course, you could extend the the idea is as far as you want, you know, good quality canvas and so on and so forth. But let's keep it simple for now. Large, rugged and durable plastic bags and or tarpaulins. Okie dokes. Item number 16. I bet that nobody will guess this. Okay. Item number 16. I told you in the last video that you won't be able to guess this. Nobody will guess this. Pencils and paper. Remember one thing, guys. We will be in a time when it is difficult to, or impossible to go to a shop to purchase many of the advanced modern-day products that we take for granted. And some of those products will be vital in our time of crisis. In the absence of the easy or any use of cell phones or the easy or any use of computers, pencils and paper are going to be more valuable or more um, useful than they are even now. We're going to be writing, mes sending messages, keeping records, etc, etc, etc. We're all going to wish that we had more pencils and more paper than we ever dreamed of taking along with us, if not for ourselves, for sharing or bartering and trading with the people around us. So give that some thought. Thanks, everybody. Cheers.